As Tom Brady captured his seventh Super Bowl victory, the New England Patriots crumbled without him. The Cam Newton experience was up and then down, and Bill Belichick had his first losing record since the year 2000. 2020 was definitely out of the ordinary for New England. But Belichick has gone all in in free agency this offseason, setting up another Patriots playoff run in the near future. First, help us reach 100K by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification so you never miss an upload. The number one question for the Patriots heading into this offseason was quarterback. Tom Brady left a gaping hole that Belichick hoped Cam Newton would fill. Newton had a less than optimal season passing, however, throwing eight touchdowns to ten interceptions. But looking back, he started out hot in New England before falling apart after a bout with COVID-19. Belichick likely still has faith in the former MVP, inking him to a one-year deal that can be worth up to 8.6 million. If the Patriots want to see an improved offense with Newton, they're going to have to do what they didn't do for Brady, giving him competent receivers. And it sounds like New England is going back to their roots, trying to mimic the iconic tight end duo of Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. New England signed Jonu Smith to a four-year, $50 million deal, finally filling that tight end vacancy that Gronkowski left when he retired from the Patriots. But Belichick wasn't done there, bringing in Hunter Henry on a three-year, $37.4 million contract. The other notable offensive signing is everyone's most reliable receiver, Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar inked a two-year, $22 million contract, money that certainly is based on what Belichick thinks the 27-year-old can do in the future. The Patriots also brought back center David Andrews for four years worth $19 million. The offense is definitely looking up for the Patriots, but it's the defense that's seen huge improvements this offseason. After a huge year, JC Jackson was set to become a restricted free agent, resulting in catching a second round tender from the Patriots, likely keeping him in New England. Joining him in the secondary will be Jalen Mills, who the Patriots gave a four year, $24 million contract to help bolster their secondary. Perhaps the biggest position improvements, however, has been in the linebacker spot. It felt like almost out of nowhere, the Patriots began making a huge push to sign on player Matthew Judon. The back-to-back -back pro bowler signed a four-year, $56 million deal with New England, automatically giving the Patriots a massive upgrade. Additionally, former fan favorite Kyle Van Noy was let go by the Miami Dolphins. Quickly though, Van Noy decided to return home to the Patriots on a two-year contract worth up to $13.2 million. Belichick and company are suddenly in a solid position, but now comes the big offseason decision. What do the Patriots do with the number 15 pick at the 2021 NFL Draft? I think New England really wants to go after our wide receiver, and a guy like Jalen Waddle from Alabama has a shot to fall there. But Mel Kuyper thinks a different player from Tuscaloosa will land in New England, Mac Jones. It's no secret that the Patriots only gave Newton a one-year contract. They don't know that they want to keep him in the future, and that would signal that Belichick is interested in bringing in a new passer. Now, if you guys are new to the channel and don't already know this, I am a Patriots fan. All of my family is from the Northeast. I grew up a Patriots fan, so I'm a bit nervous for this draft, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. This past season, we finally saw Bill Belichick's poor drafting finally catch up to him, and owner Robert Kraft even addressed this, stating, we missed to a certain extent in the draft, so this was our best opportunity. Clearly, we got a peek inside of Robert Kraft's mind, and even the owner of the organization is addressing the poor draft decisions by coach Bill Belichick. Now, also as a Patriots fan, I've been lucky to see all of the wins over the years. I'm very grateful, and I'm not upset over this past season. I know some Patriots fans acted like it was the end of the world, but for me, I like to remain optimistic. So yeah, I've been lucky to see all of the wins over the years, but I've also had the pleasure of being called a bandwagon for the past 15 years. Guess that's Tampa's problem now.
Speaking of Tampa Bay himself, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just came off of a Super Bowl win. And I'd be lying if I said that didn't make Tom Brady leaving the Patriots sting just a little bit more. That being said, towards the end of Brady's tenure in New England, his leaving to me seemed inevitable. Bill Belichick already expressed him wanting to keep Jimmy G and sending Tom Brady off years ago. So that connection between player and coach hadn't really been there for a little while. Tom Brady leaving the Patriots, in my opinion, was completely justified. But we'd be lying to ourselves if we said that last season didn't paint a very clear picture on how much that man impacted this organization. I think for the Patriots now, it's an uphill battle to maintain that status of the New England Patriots. After Tom Brady left, and especially after last season, a lot of people are counting the Patriots out. But as for me, I'm excited for all of these offseason moves. It seems as though that the front office is taking advantage of that big money that they had to spend, bringing in some notable names. Most importantly, they're trying to build a competitive offense, something that clearly wasn't a thing last season in the absence of Brady. The tight end position was one that was talked about heavily last season for the Patriots. They just lacked talent at the position, and Matt Lacoste and Ryan Izzo just weren't going to make that type of impact that they needed to on the field. Now, with the addition of Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith, I see the Patriots' red zone efficiency skyrocketing. Last season, they finished 24th in red zone efficiency with only 54.17% of their attempts ending in a touchdown. So now that we have those two great tight ends on the team, we could see a revival of that double tight end look that was so dominant. Now, while tight ends can be great pass catchers, we really needed to address the wide receiver position as well. As you guys know, over the past season or two, Julian Edelman has been the only solid guy that people could really rely on. Other than that, the Patriots last season were relying on Demir Bird and Jacoby Myers to get things done, and we all know that Nikhil Harry really hasn't lived up to the, the draft class that he's even in. The man just hasn't broken out yet. So, in light of that, the Patriots brought in Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. Aguilar will add a deep threat to this team that just wasn't there before. Now, whether or not Cam Newton's arm can accommodate a deep threat is a different story. But, you know, for now, I'll remain optimistic. As for Bourne, he should definitely add some stability for the Patriots' revived passing attack. Coming off of a four-touchdown, 669-yard season, I just want to add that if Bourne had been on the Patriots last year, he would have finished second in receiving yards leader behind undrafted free agent Jacoby Myers. So I think it's safe to say that the Patriots definitely needed help in the wide receiver department. And I'm ultimately glad to see that they're doing something about it. Because a couple years ago, if you remember, the Patriots had Antonio Brown. And for me, I was stoked about that opportunity to have Antonio Brown on the team, but we all know how short-lived that was. The Patriots also had Josh Gordon on their team at once, a man who is said to be the next great wide receiver in the league. But we all know how that worked out. So what we smoke me. So seeing the Patriots upgrade their wide receiver talent is really good to see as a fan. Because it's safe to say that the Patriots really didn't do a great job at solidifying a passing attack last year, having to rely heavily on the run game. Which is fine, but if you have to rely on one aspect of your game, you become extremely predictable. Now, do I think Newton has what it takes to carry the Patriots? to a winning season, to a playoff berth. I think he can. I think Cam Newton still has the potential to add value to this team and actually help contribute to winning games this next season. Whether Cam is the answer for New England or not is still up in the air for me. But regardless, these new additions should no doubt help him succeed next season. Bringing back David Andrews and reacquiring Trent Brown is a major plus for this already top five offensive line. I personally think with all of these tools at Newton's disposal, this year is his make it or break it year. 
Because if you don't succeed with all of this talent that the Patriots are handing to you on a silver platter, then you don't deserve to be the guy starting in New England. I'm extremely optimistic, and maybe I shouldn't be, but I am, because now he has had a full offseason to work with coaches, to learn the playbook, work with teammates, something that he really didn't have a great opportunity at doing last season. So I'm optimistic that he has built some chemistry among the locker room, among the coaches, and has become a little more comfortable in the franchise. But I mean, if last season did teach me anything, it's not to get my expectations too high. But the additions at tight end alone should help bolster his stats. Like I said, Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry have both been known to be extremely reliable in the red zone. But I believe Hunter Henry will be used more as a Travis Kelsey-like tight end, going out for passes much more often than Jonu Smith, who I believe will be heavily used in the red zone if they don't choose to run the double tight end look as often as I think they are. Both have extremely different styles of games, but there's no doubt that they're both going to add extreme value to this team. I know the question on everyone's mind now, following all these free agency moves pre-draft, is are the Patriots good enough? to even make a run. Now, this is probably somewhat biased from a fan perspective, but I believe that the Patriots definitely have a shot at making a playoff run, and maybe a deep one at that. I believe that they could possibly win their division, with the Bills now up and coming and doing really well in the playoffs last year, and the Dolphins solidifying themselves in the league as a competitive team. I think the AFC East is going to be way more competitive than it has ever been. So with that being said, the Patriots are going to have to do really well this next season in order to either win their division or clinch a wildcard spot. And while I think the Patriots can be playoff contenders, before I go calling them Super Bowl contenders, I still have a lot more that I need to see. It's only been two years since the New England Patriots took home their sixth Super Bowl, but things have changed dramatically in Foxborough post Tom Brady era. There's still a ton of questions surrounding New England, specifically at quarterback and wide receiver, but Bill Belichick is all in this offseason, trying to put together another Patriots team that can make a Super Bowl run. Again, help us reach 100k by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification so you never miss an upload. When we reach the milestone, we will be giving away an NFL jersey of your choice. To enter, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on. Then, follow us both on Instagram and post a screenshot of you subscribed on your story. Then, tag us both to be entered for a chance to win an NFL jersey of your choice.